Hey everybody, my name's Rob, but that's not the point. The point of this video is actually just to go through and show you a screen recording of how I use a program called GoodSync. What I essentially do is use that software to make sure that two drives are duplicated. So I actually have always got two hard drives. For every single drive I have, I've got the mirror. One of the things you want to be able to do is actually keep them synchronized. Now, there's a few ways to do that. There's software that will do it at a hard drive level. I choose to use one at a software level. And the reason that I use GoodSync is because I want to see a report of what's about to happen before it does. So you'll see that in the demo that I'm about to show you. And just be aware that I've got uh, links in the description below for where to get GoodSync and also for the accompanying blog posts where I sort of step through my strategy around why I do it this way and why I don't have a more complicated backup system at home than just simply software to sync two drives. Let's get into it. All right, so obviously you can download uh, GoodSync for all your different devices from their website, link in the description, but let's just jump straight into uh, what we're actually trying to achieve today. We've actually got two hard drives that we want to synchronize. Um, I've named one Travel 2020 and the other one Travel 2020 Mirror. You see on the Travel 2020 drive, I've got a directory with the same name. And likewise on the Travel 2020 Mirror, uh, I've got a directory there. So the idea is that everything in this directory will match everything in that directory. Doing it this way, is recommended because obviously it allows you then to move where these folders live. So you can move them from one drive to another or have a snapshot drive. So by having them in folders, they are um, not just loose in the root of the drive and it allows them to be uh, moved around and compared much, much easier. So I think it's a good practice to keep. All right, so the idea is we're gonna try and keep both of these uh, in sync. You notice at the moment there's a GS data folder there, which is uh, a, a hidden file. I have mine visible and uh, that's where um, GoodSync will actually store data related to jobs you create in those folders. So they can be deleted and then recreated by GoodSync. They also will store um, uh, like the GoodSync recycling bin and things like that. All right, so going into the GoodSync software, the layout of the program is very simple. Um, on, essentially on the left-hand side, you have jobs and job groups. The right-hand side will show you um, what's going on um, when you click on each particular job. Besides that, there's some automation options. I have experimented with some automation options for different workflows. Uh, it's a very, very powerful uh, program and um, I might make more videos on how I use it in detail, but essentially the purpose of this video is just synchronizing one folder to another or one drive to another. And that's what I'm gonna show you what I do right now. It's super easy to set up, you just create a new job. Uh, this one I'm gonna call it the same as I call the, the uh, drives. So then I know what this job is related to and I'm gonna do a backup. So I wanna go from one drive to the other. When I select the left-hand folder, you'll see here I've got plenty of options, but just gonna do a normal file system drive here, travel 2020, and I select that folder as the left-hand side. And it'll prompt saying, hey, we notice that you're using a portable drive. Would you prefer to use the name of the drive rather than the letter of the drive? Which means when you plug it back in, if it gets given a different letter, uh, it'll just use the name and, and good sync will still work no matter what. This is super handy. Uh, and if you understand what I'm talking about, you'll understand why that's very, very useful, especially if you're doing some sort of automation. You can have these jobs sitting there waiting for drives to be plugged in. Uh, and as soon as you plug them in, they uh, get detected and start backing up. So that's very, very handy if you, if you want to set up some sort of automation for traveling drives, coming home, plugging them in uh, to a system and then having them automatically sync to a, a, another storage. So that's um, very, very useful. Okay. Um, it also just saves time. So on the right hand side, obviously it's the mirror uh, drive and the mirror folder. Okay, and same again, we say yes to uh, allowing it to use the drive name. So it's pretty descriptive. Travel 2020 is the job on the left hand side. Um, if I wanted to put it into a group, I can. Um, it just allows you to keep, keep all of your jobs organized. And essentially all you do is hit analyze. It'll analyze. There's no changes between these drives, they're exactly the same. And I can't synchronize because they're identical. Um, that's essentially it. You can come back later on and change the direction to be a, a two-way synchronization. And also another option that I usually check when I'm setting up the jobs is under the recycling bin, the save, deleted, or replace files. Um, I don't want it to keep. If you keep that, basically, it'll, for a period of time, it will keep files on the secondary drive. I don't want that. I want to, if I see it deleting files, I'm doing that on purpose. And the benefit of running this analysis is that you get to see what happens before it happens. So just as a quick, quick uh, demo, I go into the travel 2020 here, I'll create a um, new folder called test. I'll jump back into good sync and I'll hit analyze. I'll say there's a new folder being created. This is the report that I'm talking about. It tells you what's gonna happen and you can click to, to filter what's gonna happen. It's gonna be saying a new thing's gonna be created on the right. It's a folder called travel test. 
it's zero size, nothing inside it. Hit synchronize, it copies it over, and uh, then realizes it's done. Any problems will get reported in this bottom status window down here. Um, and essentially, that's how it works. It's that simple. So let's go through a bit of a scenario now that um, is pretty common to me. I've got an SD card here that I'll plug in. And usually when you plug in an SD card, there's a DCIM folder, which is uh, common for most cameras. Now, what I'll tend to do is try not to make any changes to the card before I copy things. So I usually just grab whatever's in there literally everything and uh, copy then I go across to my main drive travel 2020 now here uh, we'll create a new job so I'll imagine that I went and did an opera house job so I'll create the project folder which doesn't exist yet which would be uh, 2020 uh, January say the 7th and it will be the opera house um, so far fires as an example and well, that's the project folder. Inside the project folder, I'll end up having a whole bunch of folders. I usually have a, a Lightroom library folder, um, and then I have a Rushes folder, usually with all the data in it. And inside here, I'll create my first folder. Now, I do this um, quite verbosely. There is, there's a reason I do this, and I'll show you why uh, in a minute. When I'm just doing the raw cards on a job, my biggest concern is if I find files on the card, I won't know uh, where they came from later on if I've left them there. So I actually do the same um, sort of naming convention. And I'll do the camera that it came from. And then I'll usually do, say this is like, you know, batch one or card one or something. So I usually write card one. Okay, so you can see the name there. Um, I then go inside that folder and then I paste contents of the card into that folder. So at this point in time, the card has only been read from. That's the first thing that's ever happened. And now we can jump into the actual card itself. Before I do that, I go back and I copy this folder name. I go back to the card. I create a new folder on the card using that same name. And I move all of the contents into that folder. So that if some reason I got interrupted right now, I know if I come to this card, I've got this folder here, and I know based on my procedure that that means that I've already copied this to uh, the primary drive where they, they're going to live, the project drive, and um, that's the folder where I'll find them. Okay, so there's a reason that that's the reason I give it that really verbose name. When I'm out in the field, the last thing I want to do is um, get mixed up or I'm not sure whether I copied certain files off the card or not. So this says to me, these files have been copied at least once uh, from the card to the hard drive. That's what it says at this point in time. So then if I come into Good Sync, you'll notice if I hit Analyze now, it says um, there's a new folder is going to be created. Um, there's a new one called Lightroom and then Rushes. Under Rushes, there's another folder going to be created with this project name um, and then this card name. And there's the files. So then I'll just hit Synchronize. And... Analyze it again, and you see that now that's copied. So if we jump over to the drive just to compare them, you'll see that on the Travel 2020 drive, there's the project folder there. On the mirror drive, there's a project folder there, and there these folders are directly synchronized. There's a few more things you can do within the Good Sync window, which I won't go into right now. Um, but you can right click and actually exclude folders based on their name, their location, things like that too. So you can set up. Um, some quite complex backups uh, if you need to. However, for most of my things, I just have one left side copy to the right side. I'll quickly show you uh, again um, what I would do then if I have a second card. So at this point, the primary card has actually got three copies with all under the same folder name. And for me, uh, this is gets plugged in now. I think I've set this up as a pretend, pretend GoPro. So again, I'll take the files in the root folder here. I'll then Copy them to the project folder. The rushes, I'll create a new folder called 2020-02-07. Opera House, New South Wales Fires, GoPro, card one. I copy the files inside there. Now you may not like this particular file workflow. You might think it's too complicated and, and not see the benefit in it. I did create a, a blog post where I do explain um, the reason I do go through these steps. The link's in the description. However, I have done these in a way that um, 
makes sense to me and then I know exactly where the steps are up to and I'm not relying on uh, software and I'm also making sure that I minimize the number of writes to the particular cards that I'm uh, using. So at this point in time, this card has just been read from once. So right from now on, I have two copies. Uh, I go back to this folder, go back to the card, I create a folder to indicate these files have been moved to the drive once. Uh, if you were wanting to, you could actually then take this folder, cut, and then paste it onto the second drive, and then just use GoodSync to confirm that it's been synchronized. So I'll just show you that process a little bit differently. So here, right now, I've got um, one copy on the hard drive. I'm going to cut this one and actually paste it uh, onto the mirror drive into this location. I prefer not to do this way, uh, it is a bit risky, but this is the way I essentially do it when I'm using dual cards because I know that I've got two copies. And what we're expecting to see now when we go into good sync when I run um, analyze is it should say there's no ch Okay, so now I'll just run through the scenario again where I might imagine that I'm for some reason uh, on the primary drive that I've been using. You can see on the, imagine on this drive I had been doing some uh, organization and under my main folder I had for some reason, I uh, lost this set of files here. Imagine that I had moved them or deleted them or whatever happened. So in this case, I'll just delete them. And you can imagine trying to notice 20 files missing out of a sequence of 300 uh, image time lapse is um, a pretty useful thing to be able to identify uh, as a problem. Okay. So then the next time that I you know, was working on the project, I did a synchronization in GoodSync. And you'll see that it's saying there are changes to be made, and on the right-hand side, 11 of them are going to be deleted. You can see them here. I go, hang on a second, let's just show me those files. I didn't delete these files, did I? And what I can do is I can open the right files to actually see. I go, hang on a second, this photo is not something that I remember deleting. So easily, before I think about it, I can say, you know what, it's better to be safe than sorry. I can um, copy them from right to left. And I'll just go through and check all these boxes for me here. Okay, and then I can synchronize. It'll copy them back from the, uh, during the job, job, it'll do all the normal changes, but it'll copy those ones back to left hand side. So if you analyze, there's no changes. If I go back to my file system, you notice those files are actually back here. So that's uh, the main reason that I use this software is to keep the two file systems in sync. And then it's to have that report uh, that allows me to quickly check what's about to happen, what's gonna get copied, uh, what photos, files I wanna include and what I don't, and what's gonna be deleted and not deleted. So I'd rather have um, more files uh, than some deleted by accident. And one of the things when you're copying drives and mirroring drives and things like that is that you might end up with a situation where you find files on the SD card and you're not sure have you backed them up or not. This process that I use, make sure that I've got that folder name, which means that I know that if they're in a folder on the drive, uh, let's plug back in that main SD card again. You see what I mean? So if going through my cards, about to clear them or format them. This card comes in and I know that there's, if there was a folder like this with photos in it, I'd say straight away I know that they are not backed up and that one is um, backed up at least once. So the only thing I need to know if I want to delete this folder is I need to go uh, to the mirrored drive, make sure that that drive folder exists on the mirror and then I know that I can clear, uh, format that card if I wasn't 100% sure. So usually I try to empty my cards as I go along. Um, for bigger projects, I just let the cards fill up with these sorts of folders. So by the end of the job, I might end up having um, a bunch of folders. Obviously the date will change to the 8th. So I'll end up with a bunch of folders like that, and then the folders of the day shoot in a folder like that. And so yes, the cards will slowly fill up, but uh, I have... Um, uh, cameras with dual cards and the way I usually do it is the second card fills up with folders like that so I've always got three copies I've got um, the copy on the primary hard drive the synced copy and I've also got a copy in the camera and the card wallet that I'm carrying around so uh, the likelihood of those three uh, being lost on a job is very minimal now be aware that <clears throat> a lot of the work that I do is outdoors um, I'm not always available to go back home and dump them onto a big hard drive array like a wedding photographer would so making sure that I have three copies out in the field is actually quite important to me. Uh, there is one other option which I think a lot of people might um, be curious about if they are doing some high-end work, 
And that is in the advanced section of the area's ability to uh, click to compare checksums, which I know is very, very important. A lot of people doing large video copies. I want to make sure that the checksums, basically what that does is it allow, uh, runs a little algorithm on the file before and the uh, a file after on the destination to make sure they're mathematically um, the same, making sure that nothing got corrupted while the file got copied over. I didn't um, show the how I integrate Lightroom into this sort of workflow. A lot of people might ask me. So here's a little bonus um, uh, thing on Lightroom. So as you can see in my actual uh, working folder, I've created a sort of subfolder called Lightroom, uh, which is currently empty. And what I end up doing is actually going to Lightroom. And I currently use Lightroom. Um, so I go create a new catalog. I will say create new. I will go to the drive, uh, make sure that it's under the Opera House job. I'll give it a name. And what I'm doing is creating a Lightroom uh, catalog per project because of the fact that um, a lot of the times I'm not actually using the files for myself, the shop for clients. It allows me to sort of keep them nice and organized and later on um, I can then bring them over into a uh, portfolio uh, catalog which has everything. But for now, this is what I do. Um, and as you can see here, there's nothing in this. It's brand new. Uh, you just go to the folders and I usually do, do add. I then browse to the drive to make sure that I'm in the right spot, travel 2020, and I click on the root project folder. This will get everything that's inside that project folder. Um, Lightroom is very, very good at ignoring itself. Um, for the moment, I don't tick uh, build smart previews. You can do that. Uh, but for this purpose this demo, I won't. I'll just do the basic settings uh, here. Uh, import. I could do another video on my full workflow where I do uh, tag and rename my files and everything. But for the moment, I'm just sort of showing you the rough um, overview of how I get Lightroom to start working on those files. And then, so for subsequent days of the project, um, I will then come in here and right click and then just use the synchronized folder option to um, bring in and out changes that I've got. So we're working on time lapses or bringing in the next day's uh, folders. I just open up Lightroom and hit synchronize to bring in the next group of folders. Shut down Lightroom. And then if we jump into Good Sync, you'll notice that now when I analyze this job, there's the new folder called Lightroom and it's got all of the Lightroom um, files inside it that it needs and the catalog itself, which is the most important. You can uh, get it to ignore the LR data files if you want. You can you can set up a rule to do that if you not uh, if you don't want that. I personally let it, let it do that. The most important thing it is is the catalog file itself um, and the files. So you can set up a rule to to ignore the rest of them. But for me, I just um, analyze it as is, synchronize it, and this way I've got a copy of the catalog and all of the um, raw files both on the primary drive and their mirrored copy. So hopefully that extra little bit of uh, Lightroom helped to understand how I sort of go about my um, projects when working out in the field. Uh, comments and feedback are welcome on the video like this because um, it'll encourage me to do more. If you did find this tool useful, I can share other things that I do use. There's an affiliate link to GoodSync. If you want to buy it, you can. Um, I think I've bought three copies so far that have on all my, all my computers. I'm always trying to improve and learn, so I really do encourage uh, any feedback. So far, this is something that has evolved over time for me. Uh, and something I found quite robust and something that I can do when I'm tired and never make a mistake. And uh, if I get interrupted, I can come back and I know exactly where I'm up to. It's a little bit manual, but I do prefer that. All right, thanks very much for watching and uh, hopefully you found this useful.